Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be continuing on my th current theme of painting flowers, although I'll probably be back to a landscape um, next video. Today I'm going to be painting those really pretty flowers um, known as Cosmos um, and I'm going to be treating them in a fairly um, abstract way. Um, I have drawn out the petal shapes and the flower shapes very simply in pencil and used masking fluid to mask them out and to preserve the white of the paper for the flowers so I can then paint them in nice and freshly without having to worry about preserving them, um, painting this really lovely wet in wet wash. I'm only going to be using three colours today. You can see two of them here, um, Opera Rose and Cerulean Blue. And then a bit later on, I shall use some gamboge hue for the centres of the cosmos flowers. I wet my paper all over and then using a large Pro Art Ron Ranson Harky brush, um, I spread the paint unevenly at a slight diagonal across the paper and then sprayed it with a water mister to encourage the run. My board's at an angle of about 45 degrees, the way that I usually paint, so that then gravity will help me to paint and it allows the paint to just flow down beautifully. And you can see it's flowing over the masking fluid flowers, preserving the white. And as soon as it looks the way I want it to look, then I will lay it flat and stop the flow, making sure I wipe up around the tape so I don't get any runbacks with pools of water that might go back into the painting once it's laid flat. And then using an inky consistency mixture of both those colours, Opera Rose and Cerulean Blue, and a small stiff bristle brush, I'm flicking in and spattering in um, some drops of paint across the bottom just for added texture and tone. And maybe dabbing a little bit out here and there if I've got slightly two larger blobs but I want those blobs just to sort of diffuse into the wet washes and just add a little bit of variation um, and directionality. The wash is still very wet I can see the shine on the paper um, as there's lots of water on the surface so I'm going to leave it to dry for a, a few minutes until the shine is almost off the paper and then I'm going to add my ordinary fine ground table salt. If you add this when the paint is too wet, it will either make a mess or nothing will happen because the salt will all dissolve. And if you apply it to paper that's dry, nothing will happen, you won't get any effects. But if you practice and find that sort of sweet spot between too dry and too wet, then you can get some really pretty abstract flower effects as the little salt grains push away the paint and the water they sort of repel it and create these really pretty little patterns you can see the salt sitting on the surface there and you can also see how the paper isn't too wet there but you can already see um, the paint starting to soak into the salt and while it's wet just before it dries I shall use the corner of my plastic store card, or you could use a palette knife, just to etch in a few stalk shapes coming down from the flowers and from the little buds. Not too many, just enough to give me that impression, because I'm not going to be painting in too many stems, maybe a few bits and bobs at the end, but I want to keep this nice and soft and impressionistic. I'm now going to leave it to dry completely. My paper is Saunders Waterford um, cold press paper, 140 pounds weight, 11 inches by 15 inches or 28 centimeters by 38 centimeters. It's 100% cotton paper and it's absolutely beautiful. I highly recommend it. And here it is, it's all dry. The salt has made some beautiful effects. I made sure I brushed off all the remaining salt and checked it with a dry brush when it's completely dry. Um, because sometimes you're left with some little salt crystals on the surface. Um, at other times, the salt just completely dissolves. So that's nice and clean. So I can begin to work now on the rest of my painting. 
So using a clean dry finger, I'm rubbing off the masking fluid from the flowers. You can use an eraser or you can use the tacky side of a piece of masking tape to pull up um, the latex from your flowers. Um, once it's all off completely, then go over it, check it with your finger in case there's any bits that you've missed, you'll be able to feel the difference of the latex and then rub off those bits. Give it a quick brush with a dry brush to make sure you get rid of any crumbs before you continue painting. And now I'm going to start work on the flowers. This is my small calligraphy brush. I think it's otherwise known as a rat liner. Um, it's unbranded. It was just bought generically from eBay quite a while ago. Um, any small brush with a point will do. And I'm going to put in my yellow centers in my flowers, sort of dotting and dashing in these roundish central areas um, using gamboge hue. My gamboge and my cerulean blue are both Cotman colours, tube paints, and my opera rose is Jackson's own brand paint. I think you can see that these three primary colours work really well together to give the painting a lovely, fresh, bright, summery feel. I think I'm getting a bit bored of winter here in the UK and I'm sort of dreaming of lazy, hazy summer days and all those beautiful flowers. Now this is um, quite a watery, weak mixture of the Opera Rose. And I'm painting in my petals, going over the white paper, um, because these Cosmos flowers of mine are mostly going to be pink. There might be a couple that are sort of almost white. You can get Cosmos in... Um, most colours, yellow, white, different shades of pink. They're very pretty flowers. But I think here I'd like to keep it fairly simple and just allow a little bit of the um, yellow from the gamboge centres to run into the paint on the petals. So as I work across my flowers, um, I'm going to slightly vary the tones of pink here and there, slightly deeper um, around the bases of the petals. And maybe use a tissue just to knock back some of the stronger paint if it's looking a little bit too bright. This flower is the largest flower, it's my main flower, so I'm using a slightly more pigmented mixture of Opera Rose for this flower. Um, but I shall still try and see if I can get some variation in the tones, get some lighter and darker tones within each petal uh, by painting quite loosely and then sort of maybe pulling some of the paint out with a thirsty dry brush or using a tissue. You can also see that I'm using gravity again to paint because the board is at an angle of 45 degrees so the wet paints are running down towards the bottom of each petal and giving me that shadow just where I need it. And then just for some subtle, slightly darker tones here and there, I'm mixing a bit of my cerulean blue into the Opera Rose mix. Not too much, not too um, strong, but enough to give me um, sort of a purpley colour, which will add a bit of sort of shadow here and there to a few of my main flowers, not all of them. And then I can begin to use that colour to just pull down a few... Um, impressions of flower stems and stalks. Keeping this quite abstract, I think too many stems, too obvious and, are too, and it would be too overt and I'd have to paint in a lot more detail to kind of back that up. So I'm just keeping the lines very hit and miss. And I'll put a few leaves around the stems 
and also use the calligraphy brush to pull out some sort of spiky uh, leaf shapes and sepals from the buds, um, which is just the bud coverings beginning to unfurl. So you can see that now this is bringing a little bit more structure to the painting without overdoing it, hopefully. So I shall just continue to use the small calligraphy brush to flick out some sort of spidery, feathery um, leaves. Not many, but just a few uh, little flicks and lines to give me the kind of impression of the leaves of the cosmos flowers. I don't want too many, but just to build up a little bit around the base of the painting to balance things out a bit. And I'm using this mixture of opera rose and cerulean blue for this to start with. Then I'll go and put in a little bit just using the gamboge just to um, add some slightly different tones into the base of the painting and the base of the stems of the flowers. If you prefer a more sort of realistic palette or more local colour, you can of course use green for this. I decided against it for my painting. Um, I prefer just to keep this kind of colour harmony and allow the yellow gamboge in this sort of shadows below to sort of um, give me those sort of greenish tones but using yellow instead. Um, and if it's a little bit too bright, I can just use a tissue to knock some of that yellow colour back into the painting a bit more and that, that helps it to look quite harmonious. So I'm going to stop there, I'm going to call that done and let's take the tape off, uh, pulling the tape away from the painting um, and see how it looks with a clean white border. I'm very happy with the freshness and brightness of this painting. Um, I usually prefer to paint in kind of earthy, sludgy, sort of more neutral colours, but occasionally I get the urge to paint nice and bright. And this is really appealing to me. It's a lovely combination of colours. So I hope that demonstration was helpful, that you'll maybe have a go at something similar yourself. Don't be afraid to change up the colours and do something slightly different um, with the techniques that are here. And, and just enjoy the process. Flower painting can be so rewarding. It's such an interesting genre to get involved with and to experiment with. And thanks so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon, and happy painting. Bye.